Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 87 of the Rock and Roll Beer Guy podcast. Please don't forget to check out the Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash rockandrollbeerguy and get yourself access to exclusive interviews that I did at Psycho Las Vegas with Andrew WK, CKY, Red Fang, Enslaved, and a bunch of others. On this episode, I talked to John Five. John Five is a guitar player that has worked with some of the greatest musicians on the planet. And when I say that, I'm not exaggerating. Here's a quick list of some of the musicians he's worked with. Ozzy Osbourne, Meatloaf, Garbage, Slash, Leonard Skinner, Rob Halford, Katie Lang. And he know, you, you might know him as the guitarist for Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie. He was also in the David Lee Roth band. I mean, the guy has done it all. We go through that a little bit, talk about his career and all the amazing musicians he's worked with. We talk about his new solo project, John Five and the Creatures Invasion, which is coming out in the summer of 2019. Uh, they have a video out for that right now called Zoinks. You should check out. It's this animated video. It's really cool. Uh, we talk about that. We talk about their upcoming tour. We talk about his face paint. It was a great conversation and a real honor talking to him. I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to check him out on social media and go check him out on tour. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Cheers. John. Hey, how's it going? Doing all right, doing all right. Let me, uh, Good. all right. Uh, welcome everyone to the Rock and Roll Beer Guy podcast. I'm here with John Five. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, and how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Having a pretty, pretty relaxed morning so far, I think. Well, that's fine, fine. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to you. I mean, you, you said you were doing an interview beforehand. How many of these do you do a day? Well, I only put it to two a day because I have so much to do throughout my day. I, um, I get up about seven thirty, and, uh, you know, I'm constantly going in and that's every day. It doesn't matter, you know, what day it is. Wow. So from seven thirty AM you're going, you're just right. Now. Yeah. <laughs> and that's on a normal day, not considering a day where you're in the middle of like a tour cycle or an album cycle or something like that. Actually, it's a lot more relaxed on tour because, you know, there's so many things to do here. Like if, if somebody's like, hey, can you come in the studio and do this? Or can you come do that? Well, you know, well, no, I can't because I'm, in, you know, in Oklahoma or something like that. But, you know, when I'm, uh, when I'm home, it's, it's, there's so much going on. I, I can imagine. I mean, you keep yourself busy. Do you have time to ever be like at home, just not doing anything? <laughs> well, I try to not, I, I try to do everything from home, if you will. Like if someone wants to do an on camera interview, I'll say, come to the house or, or this, or the other thing. Um, you living here in Southern California, you know how busy and bad the traffic is. So um, just try to do everything from home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, traffic, parking situations everywhere in L.A. are terrible. Uh, and there's always so much going on, too. There's so many concerts that even things that people don't know about, like you, you get your normal tours, but there's also like tribute shows. Like we re recently the, the Chris Cornell tribute show at the Forum, which are like one off type of deals. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many, so many things going on um, all the time. But yeah. So I basically try to get all of my work done at home, and uh, that saves me, as you know, hours and hours every day for not having to um, get on the freeway and things like that. So, yes, I, um, I am home quite a bit when I am home. Yeah. So do you have, like, a, a, any time for, like, a normal family situation? Do you have a family? Oh, or? yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's why, you know, I do start my day 
taking my son to school. So, uh, you know, I, I, I do that, you know, that's the first thing I do. And then I hit the ground running after that. <laughs> so for anyone that's listening, that's not aware, I don't know who would not be, but I mean, you have a crazy, crazy resume, uh, anywhere between David Lee Roth and Marilyn Manson, Rob Zombie, uh, you know, also you've done work with like Rob Halford and Katie Lang and Meatloaf and Ozzy and, you know, how did this all happen for you that you just all of a sudden you're just, you know, the, the guitar guy to go to for all these huge names in music? You know, I think uh, being a fan, every everybody I've worked with, I'm a fan of. Uh, like when I got a call, hey, do you want to write, you know, a Rod Stewart song? I was like, absolutely. I know every song there is, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think that helps a lot from... Atlantic Crossing from 1976, I'll know exactly what they're talking about. So that helps, you know, and also caring really helps a lot, too. Like, oh, I really want this. Um, are you planning on going to NAM this year? You know, I don't know. I have um, some interviewers coming to the house to do some stuff, but um, I, don't, I don't know. I'm the Dime Bash thing, but uh, I'm not sure yet. yet. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where every year I, I tell myself, like, yeah, I'm going to go. It's going to be exciting. I get to, you know, interview a bunch of people and hang out with some friends from out of town. But it becomes such a drag by, like, the third day I just want to, like, I don't even want to go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard because there's so many people. Yeah. I mean, there is a ton of people. And people come from all over the world. And it's, and it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing event that's been going and but now it's just it's not really about the music or the it's musical instruments or anything like that the music gear it's kind of a three-day party which is fun too you know yeah i mean that's pretty much why what the mo the part that i enjoy the most is being able to hang out and party with the friends and i when i go there i'm not there looking for sponsors you know i mean unless there's like a microphone sponsor for the podcast or whatever but i'm not looking for a guitar yeah, sponsor or anything <laughs> And that's what 90% is. It just people going to like, you know, hang out and hang out with friends and stuff. But before it was just like a guy in a suit showing the new, you know, guitar. Right. <laughs> it, but it, it, now, now it's just like, you know, the Budweiser girls, you know, in a bikini walking around <laughs> and things like that. It's changed. So you have an album coming out in the summer of 2019, uh, John Five and the Creatures, uh, called Invasion. Yes. And I saw a video. You have a video for Zoinks. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's an animated video. I mean, it seems like you're telling a story. Is this going to, you're going to put out more videos? Uh, is that the idea to put out like a whole kind of a short film based on all the songs? Or is, was it just a one-off for that one song? Well, doing animation, I mean, I don't do it, but it is so time consuming. It, it just takes forever. And the guy from, um, the guy from, uh, Disney is doing it and it's like phenomenal. Cause he did, he does like frozen and he does, uh, wreck it Ralph and all these really cool things. And, um, but it takes forever to do these, to do this animation. Mm, so, but my next video is called Crank It, and that is, it's like an acid trip. I mean, there's, boo there's boobs, and there's asses, and there's guitar <laughs> solos, and it's all crazy, you know? And, um, but the third video that comes out March 1st is going to be another extension of Zoinks. It's going to be part two to Zoinks. Wow, okay. Well, yeah. that's, that's very cool. I mean, are you uh, looking into doing more of a storytelling? Uh, are you into, I know that you've been working with Rob Zombie. So has that, uh, his filmmaking kind of rubbed off on you where you kind of want to do that too? Well, I know nothing about making films. I just know, you know, I just enjoy films and watching them. But anything I do, I want to put a lot of time to it if you will you know i just don't want to put something out and go here you go and it looks like crap i always want to put quality work out 
with anything I do, if it's a t-shirt or if it's a CD or if it's a tour book, anything, I want it to be quality. Well, yeah, you could tell. I mean, like, like I said, the video, top-notch animation, and, uh, you know, it looks like you, there's there's a lot of effort put into it. It's not just put together quickly for a quick buck or anything like that. Like, you, you could tell that oh, there's God, passion no. behind it, yeah. Yeah, no, there's definitely blood, sweat, and tears behind that for sure. Yeah. And, you know, and it's funny to me, so I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, you know, I was a fan back in the day growing up of Marilyn Manson. That's how I got to know you. And when I found out that you are actually kind of like this guitar virtuoso, it kind of blew me away because honestly, in my mind, it was like, all right, Marilyn Manson has these like rotating guitarists and the music itself is rather, it's not simple, but it's not like what you do, which is, you know, very technical. And uh, it kind of blew me away. I was like, I didn't know you beforehand. Uh, I know you before yeah. that you worked at, you know, with Katie Lang and all that. And then Leonard Skinner, which is nuts to me. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so d does that happen often where like, I mean, I guess now at this point in your career, no. But back then, was it like where people kind of like, oh, wait, you're you're actually a badass guitar player, not just, you know, another uh, another just studio guitars that that Manson hired or or anything like that. Well, I, I look at it, I think why I always work is because I always play the songs how they're supposed to be played, like recorded. If they're recorded a certain way, I will play it exactly like the record um, live. And I, because I, I, I have a lot of respect for the song, you know, whatever I'm going to play live. And I think that's why I always work, because I never try to overplay or do any thing like look at me type of thing and i just always tried to do my best to play right on time and to play perfectly and things like that and give the music i'm i'm supporting so um i think that's why i always worked but then i was like all right well i'm gonna do some picking you know and so um that's what I did. And, you know, when people call for it, when they're like, hey, do a solo here, you know, I'll be able to give them what they want. So, um, but then I started doing instrumental records because that's what my passion is. I just sit on the couch and play crazy guitar all the time. That's awesome, man. And, and you know, it's, it's admirable, actually, that you're not that guy that... You know, you're you're playing, let's say, a, a, a meatloaf song, and then all of a sudden you just r jump into your own little solo, just kind of to show off. You know? Yeah, it's like, you know, if I'm gonna play "Sweet Dreams," I'm gonna play "Sweet Dreams." Was recorded. I'm gonna play "Dragula" just like it is on the record because that's how it was recorded. Like, if you're gonna play a piece of music from Mozart, you're gonna follow those notes. Why is it okay to change, you know, like uh, um, Stairway to Heaven, but it's not okay to change Mozart? You know, it's like, it's, I look at it as just to give respect to this music, how it was recorded. It was recorded that way for a reason. You want to, um, they, they recorded it like this for a reason because they like the notes, you know, so um, that's how I always looked at it. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I mean, I'm as a fan, I I've always kind of been annoyed, even when it's the the artist that wrote it. It still bugs me when I go see them live, and it's like a completely different version, or the singers doing something else, like they're they're singing other lyrics, or kind of just you know, I don't know. It makes it feel like they're not into it. They're just kind of going through the motion, or they're trying to show off. You know, <laughs> it's funny because I just had this conversation with the creatures. I was like. You know, and our music is very complicated, and I like to play it just like how it's recorded. And I agree with you 100%. I love to go see a band that I pound my fist on the steering wheel because I rock out to this song. But then when I go say, see it live, it's different. And then I'm kind of bummed out, like certain drum fill or, I'm, you know, whatever, and it's changed. So I agree with you completely. But some people like the, you know, the improv of it as well. But that's just, I guess, our choice of what we like to see live. 
Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a nerd when it comes to to, to little nuances in songs too. Like, I always tell Me my, too. <laughs> I always tell my girl like, well, we're listening to a song. She's like, oh, this song's alright. I'm like, oh yeah, but listen to this little like tiny violin section here. That's like two seconds, but that's what does the whole song for me. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Or a or a guitar lick or a drum fill or yeah. something like. I love that stuff. Yeah, and and you know you go see it live and it's not there. It's like ah, what what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Yeah, yeah, right. Start throwing tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And so, uh, also for people that aren't too familiar, you you wear uh, face paint on on stage most of the time. Uh, yeah. Where did that idea come from? Is that more of like a black metal kind of uh, from there or no? Just- Kiss. When I when I was a kid, man, I just loved Kiss and you know all that theatrical stuff, you know, and it's entertainment, and I always enjoyed it. And you know, how, how can I explain it? It's uh, um, it's just something that I've always been into, and I think it looks really cool. It looks and it has to be a certain lighting, you know, because of. It a, a certain way it, it'll look you know silly or something like that but I, I've always been into it and it's it's um, entertainment I'll, I'll here's a here's an example when we walk let's say we're walking to the dressing room with like the zombie guys okay and we're we're walking to cater and we're we always travel together we always you know walk together and stuff mm-hmm. so but like okay, how are you blah 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 we walk into our walk into the stage and we have all of our stuff on. There's a zillion cameras that go off because people like to see that. They like to see the image. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with Kiss. You know, if you ask ten people if you want a picture with Kiss with their makeup on or without their makeup on, you know, pro- chances are pretty good that you know people are going to want a picture with their makeup on. Yeah, yeah, completely. I mean, I, you know, yeah, as a fan, I've always been that way, too. And as a musician, as a performer, like I've always found discomfort in the makeup or in a mask, whatever it is I'm wearing, because it lets you kind of let loose and be a persona like you. you And as I grew up watching pro wrestling, so that's kind of where I get that of like, I want to go out there and wear this mask and I could let loose and there's no kind. I mean, there's obviously there's consequences, but you kind of feel like there is no consequences of your actions. You just go out there, you play your music and, and you put on a show and then you can take it off and go home and you be yourself. Yeah. I mean, with re- I don't know much about wrestling, but what, I mean, God, what those guys go through, man, Oof, I, you know, cause I've watched it before and I'm thinking, man, these guys, that is brutal what they go through, <laughs> you know, every, every, uh, every time, you know, you don't know what's going to happen if you're going to get really seriously hurt or what's going to happen, you know? So it's that, I mean, that is very entertaining and it's a show like they, they put on like the mask and they have like, you know, bef- before they go in the ring and all that stuff, it's like a really cool build up, you know, and then they, they get, get it on and it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's always been appealing to me because you, you wear like, let's say you wear this crazy mask or makeup that makes you look evil or, and, and then you could go on, you can go out there and be evil and be this like monster for them. And then you go home and you're not that monster. So, and it, and it's a case for a lot of them. A lot of people I meet that perform in a guys like that, they, they're not like that in, in, in real life. You know, it's just a, a part of their act, part of their performance. Yeah, well, it's, um, you know, I, I kind of do, I am, you know, I've, I've always, that's the thing about it with me. It's just real with me and I've always done it. It's not like I just started doing it. I've always done it my whole life. Um, and that's, it's just who I am. Yeah. And you have, you've had different looks. Uh, how do you kind of decide what look you're going for or, uh, you know, the, I guess just the patterns are, that you choose, how do you go about doing that? You know, it's, a, that's a great question. And there's not like, I have an answer for you, but the answer <laughs> is kind of like a little, not the answer you're looking for. Like a, a crazy demon came down and had an idea for this makeup or something like that. Here's what happened. I was doing the mob scene video with Manson Mm -hmm. and I usually always do my own makeup. And this girl was doing the makeup and she got like something in my eye. And that's 
how I have that dripping eye effect because in that video, my eye was just like watering. The makeup was all running down. And if you watch the video, the very little time you can see me, I have my left eye shut because it's just, I'm in so much agony. And, wow. uh, but that's why I have that running makeup down. And the, so I've always used it cause it looked cool, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So it kind of came across as an accident. Wow. That's crazy. And I mean, gosh, there, you, you've done it all pretty much. Uh, you, you've played these enormous shows with all these big, big bands. I mean, what's the, what's the future hold for you aside from just releasing more solo albums? Like, is there a, a, you know, cause when you're coming up in the scene or you're growing up, your, your plans are like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to release these albums. I want to do this kind of a tour or whatever. Like, so what's the, what's the outlook now for you? Is there a dream project that you want to do? You know, I've done so much. I've done so much and I'm very uh, content, but I'm not uh, by any means slowing down. I'm doing more and more and more, mm -hmm. but, um, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing, to be honest. I just want to keep doing what I am doing because I love it and I'm so happy. You know, I just love what I do. You know, I just want to keep going and keep going, playing, playing shows and making records and being in zombie and doing all that stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm very content. Nice. That's great. Well, I would say keep doing it. You're killing it. I mean, the new album, I haven't heard all of it, but the, the, the track that I heard, the Zoinks, was sound, sounds amazing. I mean, you're doing the, the really cool, you're tapping a lot, and you're also doing kind of that plucking and uh, kind of slapping, slapping. The guitar, slapping the guitar. Yeah. And uh, I really yeah. dig that. I mean, you're, a big, you're big into bluegrass and uh, like banjo playing and, and stuff like that. Absolutely. I, I, there's, a, there's banjo on the record. There's a song just of mandolin. Um, there's so much going on. Are, and uh it's 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 a lot <laughs> are you into like flamenco guitar or like spanish flamenco i am i yeah i've done a song called noche across the door that is and then another song called el cucuy that's all flamenco nice 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 i gotta check those out i mean that's my heritage i grew I, you know, my family is from spain and you know, I, I was fortunate enough to take a trip out there and and take some lessons and everything and it's i'm fascinated by the whole thing Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, check it out. It's um it just put in Noche across the door and I think you'll uh, really enjoy it. Oh yeah. Now I wanted to ask you something because, you know, it's not every day I get the opportunity to um address something that, you know, it's I, I saw videos online from when you were in Manson and there was like a kind of like a argument or a fight. You guys looked like you were about to throw mm -hmm. down on stage. Was it, uh -huh. was it always like this? Because I've heard a lot of stories of, you know, him, of Mar Marilyn being that kind of person where he's just kind of pushes people's buttons and uh, knows, <laughs> knows how to piss people off. Like, was it always like that or was that a one off? No, 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 no. I mean, it's just like any anything you're in, you know, um, it's not always like that. But, you know, sometimes things happen and it's not the first time it's happened in any band that's happened in tons of bands yeah you know you can you can pick any if you think about it you can pick any band from the rolling stones to the who to manson to any band it's you know happened at some point so but no he's great and we're friends and yeah there's no problems whatsoever cool cool that's good to hear that's good to hear because you know you see videos like that and then you hear the stories of other people having issues and it's like, ah, oh, man, you know, it sucks that if, if, if he's that type of person, it, you know, it's disappointing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Which is, yeah, it's not the case. Like we're total friends. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, and then going back to the, I asked you earlier if you had a dream project, uh, is there anyone, I mean, you've literally played with everyone that I, I would pick, but is there anyone that you haven't played with that you want to play with? Um, you know, not really. I've done so much. I've played with so many people. There's not really anyone that um, I haven't worked with so, uh, or played with. You know, there's no one. I mean, I loved Prince. Oh, man. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to happen. No. 
I mean, unless they, they start pulling some of his music out of the vault and they, uh, and they start looking for people to cover, like, you know, come out and do the, his guitar part or I don't know, like kind of what Queen is doing where they're playing shows with, right. with Adam Lambert. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. But no, I'm very content and very happy with where I am. I love it. That's great. Um, yeah. What it, what are your thoughts on the current status of music where people get it through streaming services like Spotify as opposed to, you know, buying records? Is that affecting you at all in, in terms of maintaining your lifestyle or not at all? I, you know what? <laughs> Crazy, dude. But I love it. I, I really love it. We have YouTube now where you can listen to it. I said, hey, go check out my song, No Che Across the Door. And mm -hmm. all you have to do is remember it or write it down, and you can go on YouTube and not only listen to it, maybe see the video. Mm -hmm. But before, you would have to get in your car, try all that stuff. I mean, I think it's great, and it's a new day, and I support it. I'm not against it at all. That's good. Yeah, I, I, as a consumer, I love it. You have, and even I have it linked up to this little speaker in my house where I, all I have to do is say it out loud and it'll start playing, which is magic. How great is that? That is magic to me. But, but you know, I've heard yeah. stories of certain musicians that are kind of mad because the record sales are down and they're not making as much money and, you know, labels aren't supporting as, as, like, as they used to and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but you have to go with the times. It will never... I just like the sun is the sun is going to set and the sun is going to rise. I guarantee one thing: it will never go backwards, ever. Oh yeah. It won't ever go back to what. So you have to just figure it out. You got to figure it out and embrace it because it's, you know, it's. I definitely don't want to put on my pants and drive down to warehouse or tower or something like that. Remember warehouse. Records. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't want to, you know, do that. I'd much rather say it into the air. Hey, uh, you know, Alexa, play the Who live at Leeds or something like that. You know, it's it's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do miss like the old days of Tower Records doing like concerts, like for a release, like that. That was always fun. But outside from that, like, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> Um, I hear you. Yeah. I had a oh man. I had a question for you and I just kind of slipped on it right now. Um, uh, oh, okay. So are there any current guitar players that you are keeping your eye on people that you are like, Hey, this guy has got a real future or is a real virtuoso. Um, what are you thinking? Oh, there's tons. I mean, I love Guthrie Govan. I love, uh, this is an old guitar picker. From the fifties, I love Buckethead. I love all these people. Um, I love any guitar player. I can really take something from every guitar player out there. It doesn't matter who you are. You know, everyone has a little bit of something. Hmm. Uh, are there any newer bands that you're into that that maybe you know are guitar centric? Like for example, uh, I listen to a lot of Animals as leaders, and you know, Tozen is this crazy. Love Tozen. Yeah. Love Tozen. Yeah, super awesome, great. You know, that's the thing. I love that stuff. Absolutely, of course. Very cool. Um, gee, let's see. Uh, do you have any hobbies? I mean, you definitely sound like you don't have the time for it, but is there anything outside of guitar playing that you like doing? I do. I do have a hobby. Um, I have this Instagram called Knights and Satan Service, which stands, that's what they used to think KISS stood for. Oh, wow. um, and <laughs> I didn't know that I, I have. Yeah. Every day I have an Instagram and every day I've put something, a piece of merchandise up from 73 to 83 and it's a real hobby. It's, it's great. You should check it out. Knights and Satan service. It's super popular. People really enjoy it. All right. Yeah. I'll definitely check that out. I honestly didn't know that kiss. That's what people thought kiss st uh, stood for. That's Knights and Satan. Service. Yeah. Nice and Satan service. Back in the seventies, that's what they they used to think it. Uh... All right, um, I have two last questions for you. Uh, okay. One being, since this is the rock and roll beer guy thing, I wanted to ask you: Do you drink beer? Do you drink anything at all? I don't. 
I know, right? Maybe we should be on the uh, Water Guy <laughs> podcast. No, it's not a it's not a it's not a beer podcast. I mean, I'm the rock and roll beer yeah. guy because I end up going to shows with a cooler full of beer, and that's how they know me now. Um, yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> unfortunately, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Have you never drank, or is or is it like a recent kind of you know you just went sober for your health and everything? No, I, I've never I've never had a drink. Wow, that's great. Well. Isn't that strange? It's a little strange, but no, no. I mean, it's fine. It's great. I know plenty of people like that. And um, like, for example, Kurt Ballou is another guitarist. Uh, uh, he does Converge and he um, records a bunch of bands out in, in the East Coast. But he spent his entire life uh, being sober, not having a, had a drink. And now in recent days, he's like, hey, you know, I'll take a, I'll try it just to see what it tastes like because I'm getting older. <laughs> And I just want to yeah. you know, be like, all right, that's what that tastes like. And then just move on, like, but not become a drinker, you know? Right. Sure. Wow. But, you know, it's crazy to hear that considering, you know, most of the bands you're, you've worked with are, are have a, like a vibe of like this rock and rock star, you know, party animal type of personality. So it's, it's interesting to hear that you guys don't drink back or that you didn't drink back then. Yeah, no, and most people drink, you know. I think I'm out of the norm that doesn't drink because the norm is to drink, which, you know, that's it's that's fine too. Um, and then the last question I had is uh, a lot of the bands you've worked with as well, uh, like Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie, uh, they all also have like this, uh, you know, evil kind of uh, uh, satanic kind of vibe to it. And I'm not religious in any way. I'm just bringing, like, that's the, the vibe the bands give off. Is that something you look into as well, or are you just there for the music? Acted or interested, anything like that, to the dark side a little bit, because it's, it's a little taboo, and it's, but that's why you play cops and robbers. You know, you want to be the, the bad guy, or, or, or that's why every movie, you know, if there's, you know, if there's horror movies or something like that, that's why they're so popular because people are interested in it. And it's, um, you know, it's interesting. Or people like movies about serial killers or something like that. But, you know, listen, when they're, when I'm walking around outside and there's a bee drowning in the pool, I go out of my way to save that bee from drowning in the pool. That's just the person I am. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's the case for a lot of people that, that are, that give off that image. Like myself, I'm, I'm always, I've always been into the villains, uh, for, you know, in comic books or in movies, I always, I'm more interested in the villains. They just seem more interesting. Like you said. Um, and I always give off that vibe of like, look at this, like metalhead kind of, you know, satanic kind of dude, but I'm not like that. I'm like you said, I wouldn't hurt a fly you know what i mean unless you yeah. I'm, I'm provoked uh or and it's like self-defense but i'm not the violent or you know kind of cold-hearted person that the that the uh image gives off so you're just right you're, I know. You're, yeah yeah i think it's just like a uh you know it's interesting but you do love to watch movies or 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 you know read about it or watch documentaries about it because it's you know, it is interesting and it's so interesting because, um, you know, I'm not like that, but it's, it's entertainment. You know, people like to go to those movies. I love those movies more than anything, you know, but again, I would never do anything to, you know, hurt anybody or anything like that. Right. Right. Well, you mentioned you like those movies. What's uh, what's give us one movie that's uh, your favorite movie or one of your recommendations? Um, well, I love all the Universal horror movies. I love Creature from the Black Lagoon and all that. Those un old Universal movies are just the best. They're so much fun. I love them. They're a blast. <laughs> nice. Really nice. have a good time with those. Yeah. Very cool, man. Well. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here and, and thank you so much for your time. Uh, people want to follow you on social media. What, do we, what are we looking for? John five official. John. Yeah. And that's, and then check out the Knights and Satan service, uh, Instagram as well. If you'd like to stuff, and, you know, just see, uh, check out the videos and check out the new tour. We're going to be in Anaheim in the later part of February and we're going to be at the whiskey on April 6th. 
Oh, yeah. nice. I'm going to see if, if either of those lands on a Friday or a Saturday, I will definitely be there. Uh, it's my only two days off. <laughs> but uh, Oh, great. But yeah, if they are if, if they are on that time, I'll definitely come check it out. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. No, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good Cheers. one. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye. And now, put your hands, claws, tentacles, and paws together for John 5 and the Creatures! 